Welcome brothers and sisters. I'm doing a day in my life. <laughs> so I hope you enjoy it. Here we go. This is a day in my life. Inshallah. <laughs> okay, so here I am coming out to do, uh, this is just a replication of Fajr because I didn't record all of my prayers. I just recorded two throughout the day. Um, so basically in the morning, because I have my night clothes on, I put my abaya and my hijab. I don't usually wear my niqab, but I do put on gloves and socks and I do my prayers. And I strive to do my prayers five times a day. After I do my prayers, I try to do some study of scripture. So what I like to do is either sit in my bed or sit on the couch, or in this case, I decided to use the table. So I'm just sitting here with my um, scriptures. And what I like to do is I like to read Quran, but I also like to go through other holy scriptures and mostly I like to look through the Bible and do comparisons between the two stories and the different surahs and uh, different topics that they're discussing. So when I was looking through the Quran in this instance, I was um, actually searching for something that was cross-referenced in the Bible. So um, I'll read you some of this. It says, uh, and this is actually Surah 42, starting at verse 29. And among his signs is the creation of the heavens and the earth, and the living creatures that he has scattered through them, and he has power to gather them together as he wills. Whatever misfortune happens to you is because of the things your hands have wrought, and for many of them he grants forgiveness. Nor can you frustrate through the earth, nor have ye besides Allah anyone to protect or to help. And among his signs are the ships smooth running through the ocean, tall as mountains. Pay attention to verse 32. And among his signs are the ships smooth running through the ocean, tall as mountains. Okay, I'm going to read a little bit more. Uh, let's see, I'm going to start actually on verse 34. Or he can cause them to perish because of the evil which the men have earned, but much doth he forgive. But let those know who dispute about our signs that there is for them no way of escape. Whatever ye are given here is but a convenience of this life, but that which is with Allah is better and more lasting. It is for those who believe and put their trust in their Lord. Those who avoid the greater crimes and shameful deeds and when they are angry even then forgive. Those who hearken to their Lord and establish regular prayer, who conduct their affairs by mutual consultation, who spend out of what they bestow, what, what we bestow upon them for sustenance. And lastly, verse 39. And those who, when an oppressive wrong is inflicted on them, are not coward, but help and defend themselves. So actually, brothers and sisters, I was reading a different surah because I was uh, actually studying many of them throughout the night, but um, and also during the day. In fact, I <laughs> have a hard time putting down the Quran because I, if I had my way, I would just probably study it and compare scriptures and things like that uh, most of the time, but I am busy doing other things as well. The surah that I showed you right here is actually surah 39 and i was studying the verses 68 through 75 
And uh, that's talking about the end times, the trumpet, uh, things like that. So I would advise all of you to open your crowns and take a look at that as well. That's Surah 39. Okay, now moving on over to another part of my life as a woman, not a mufti. <laughs> I like to do sewing, I like to be creative, so I like to do fiber arts, and I also like to do drawing, painting, things like that, um, making different things out of materials. And so I got a new uh, quilt kit. A lot of times I make the quilts and the prayer rugs myself with no pattern, but I, I really loved this quilt when I was at the quilt store. So I bought the pattern and uh, it looks like this. And it actually is, uh, it represents the Scandinavian heritage and I myself am Scandinavian by ancestry. I am a combination of Danish, Welsh, British and Norwegian. So that area of the world, that's where my ancestry comes from. And uh, many people have asked me, am I the only Muslim in my family? Has anyone else reverted? And the answer is there is actually one other Muslim person in my family. She married into the family. Um, I can't remember exactly where she came from originally. I really only met her one time ever at a family reunion, and that was quite a few years ago. So I am the only one right now who practices the Muslim religion on either side of my family. Since this is a new project, I am actually going to focus on it a little bit better after I do this video. I just wanted to show all of you some of the things that I like to do and I will be working on this um, throughout the day. And I wanted to show you the sewing machine because I think it's amazing. It's under $200 and it's a singer. So ladies, if you're looking for a new sewing machine, I just want to let you know that you can find this online for under $200 and it's very good quality. Um, it doesn't run without electricity though, so if you get a power outage, you're pretty much stuck. <laughs> okay, so this is what I'm going to be working on after I turn my camera off. I also wanted to tell you that I do exercise daily. Not only do I go outside for a walk every day for at least 20 minutes at the very minimum, uh, it's usually more like 45 minutes to an hour. I also do exercise inside the house. I do some light weightlifting and some aerobics for a minimum of 20 minutes a day, but usually it's 30 to 40 minutes a day as well. But I didn't want to put that on here because it would look strange with me doing exercises wearing a baya. And here I am at my little workstation that I set up in my living room and uh, I do move it around my living room from time to time just to kind of get a different scenery <laughs> either on the videos or just for myself but uh, I don't spend a lot of time on the t on the phones or on the computer during the day usually Unless I'm editing a new video or I'm recording something, then I might spend a couple of hours, maybe even longer than that, depending on the project. But on normal days, I am devoting most of my time to healthy activities and to the study of the Quran and to my prayer and my relationship with Allah. So this is my website. I'm sure that most of you have seen it because you're watching this right now, but I just wanted to show you what it looks like on my end from the back and show you what I'm doing. So when I'm working on videos, I'm actually looking through the comments section. I'm trying to respond to all of you. I have a filter back here to protect myself and to protect my community from evils and negativity. So those comments get uh, caught like a fly in a spider web and they end up in this row here and then they're just automatically deleted. I delete them. Uh, I don't read them. They're gone. So 
anybody says anything bad, uh, well, it just gets deleted. <laughs> this is what's going on back here. I don't make a lot of money, you guys. I just got monetized and I'm making, I'm making about $12 a month, okay? So I don't do this for the money. I started this YouTube channel in, I think it was 2018? I'm pretty sure it was 2018 in December. And I have put out close to 200 videos and each video takes a minimum of two hours. Some of them take eight hours, some of them take a couple of days. So this is actually, you know, a job that I'm doing out of, you know, the passion of my heart. Um, because I, I use this as a form of self-expression, creativity, trying to reach people, trying to share information, uh, a way of helping other people connect to Allah, and I guess just because it's something that I really feel passionate about, and it gives me a lot of pleasure most of the time. Sometimes it feels difficult, but... I try to overcome those times and then to keep moving on. So the other thing I wanted to say is, as you can see here, I have a variety of videos because I am a whole woman. I'm not just a mufti. I'm not just a woman that just only likes fashion. I have a lot of interests. I like nutrition. I like comedy. I like travel. I like friendship. I like sharing information. I like discussing Quran and Allah and what it's like to be a Muslim in the West. I like to post my live chats on here so that people can be part of my community. I do a lot of research too. I look at my phones at the same time as I'm working on my computer usually so that I can check different social media that I'm on and that I follow because I like to get information too and so I like to compare a lot of that information or share what I feel is important information and double check and research certain pieces of information that I might feel is important to myself, my family, and you guys, my community. So here I am working at my little workstation. I do this daily. I try not to spend too much time on it. I rarely check my email. Email gets checked about once every week or two. And um, sometimes I really cannot respond to everyone, particularly on Instagram, because many people feel like they want to talk to me throughout the day every day, and I just cannot do that because it takes my focus off of my life and my projects and away from Quran readings and things like that. And um, I try to get in there and respond to all of you, um, but I've had to really cut back on that because of the distraction away from Allah and doing the regular things that I feel I need to do in my life every day. But I do love all of you and I appreciate your friendship and I appreciate the community. Here you can see again the inside of the back end of my website, Muslima of the West, and it shows me different statistics. It shows me how many hours people watched my videos, how they like them, how they don't like them. It shows me how many subscribers I'm getting, if I'm doing well, if my audience appreciates things or they don't appreciate other things and I try to pay close attention to that and here we see geography so it also tells me where my audience is coming from so here we see you know the United States, India, Indonesia, United Kingdom, Bangladesh, Germany, Saudi Arabia, Egypt, Malaysia those are my main audiences and we can see here that India is at the top Last month, in um, the United States was at the top, but a few months ago, Saudi Arabia was at the top. So it just depends, I, I guess, on the informational videos I'm putting out. And here we can see different age groups. So it actually shows me the ages of my audience. And um, 
I believe the majority of my audience is between 24 and 36. Uh, I can't see that very well right now because I'm doing a voiceover. <laughs> and here you can see all of my other social media outlets and you can read about me right here. Um, you can click on these tabs at my channel and you can see all of my videos. You can read about me. You can see which channels I promote. So this just gives you a better look at what's inside my channel, in case you were wondering. And I do love to travel, so you can see quite a few travel videos in there, and I will be traveling again shortly. I will be heading out to Nevada, which is actually going on lockdown. Um, actually, they went on lockdown today. No, yesterday. But I will be traveling in there anyway, um, because I have special certification I can get into red zones. So here we have my shop that I just opened that nobody's bought anything from. <laughs> but I, I find fashion very fun, and I thought it would be fun to open a store. So this is my Twitter account. I've had my Twitter account for quite some time, as you can see, 2010. I do have quite a few followers on Twitter, but I really don't go to my Twitter that often. So they get a sort of automatic feed sometimes from Instagram. And this is my Facebook. Facebook has the same. It gets automatic Instagram feed. I don't visit there very often. And we have Twitch, which I have not actually done anything with. So. These are some of my social media outlets, and I do spend a little bit of time every now and then checking in on these. This is the community section of my YouTube channel, so if you didn't subscribe or hit the bell icon, I would suggest you do that so that you can get my community feed, and then you'll know when I go live and when I post my videos. And this is uh, Instagram right here, my Instagram. If you are one of my YouTube followers and you would like to see more about my life and the things I do and the things that I like to look at, then you can follow me on Instagram because I have different things on there. And here we have my marriage and fan club um, website. <laughs> so this is Patreon dot com slash Muslima of the West and here I have many wonderful bachelors looking for wives and they are inside the members section so if you are a lady and you're looking for a wonderful husband please contact me you can email me at Muslima of the West at gmail dot com and I will find you a very nice match okay you can also send me your profile information and I will put you inside the member section so that eligible bachelors can contact you directly. I do not um, keep contact information away from people. So once you go in as a member, and I, the reason I have you go in as a member is because you have to put in your real name and your credit card information and things like that to protect people in there. I don't want any fraud or forgery. I want to protect the people that are in there looking for practicing spouses, and that's the best way to do it because every single person can be tracked. So if there's any um, strange monkey business, you know, and I don't think that there would be because you would be identified. So this is a good place to go to look for a spouse and this is the inside of it so you can see there are many posts I post articles I post the profiles I post videos informational videos on uh, marriage and how best to communicate with your spouse and I have some personal videos and photographs in there as well so if you wanted to go check that out you can Nutrition is very important to me, and during this holy month, and actually before the holy month started, I began fasting every day, and um, 
fasting again today. So I stop eating at about 10 or 10.30 at night, and I begin eating later on in the day, usually around 2.30 to 4.30, sometimes 5.30 or even 6 o'clock. So today, the first thing I'm having is actually a peanut butter banana spinach protein smoothie with uh, almond milk, uh, honey, and uh, yogurt. And it is, looks like two o'clock. So I'm blending it at two o'clock and um, I think I didn't actually start drinking it till around quarter after two, but I'm actually dressed to go out here. So after I drank my smoothie, I headed out here for my walk and right behind my apartment complex, I have this beautiful park and interestingly enough, it is a Scandinavian heritage park, and I am Scandinavian, so <laughs> it's fun to go out here and spend time and walk around and see things from my ancestry in my native land of Scandinavia. And so these are some of the statues of Scandinavian immigrants out here. And yes, I am an immigrant too. Everyone came here from somewhere else, so my ancestors immigrated here from Scandinavia. So here are some of the man-made lakes, and this is a Nordic church, which is a Scandinavian church. This is how they used to build them a long time ago, and it's all made out of wood. It's all carved, and I'm going to take you inside to take a little look around. You can see this large horse over here. It's made out of wood, and uh, it's a Nordic horse. I actually made one of those out of cloth. And here we go. We're inside the Nordic church, and they actually perform weddings and things in here. You can see it's all made out of wood, and the way the lighting is set and the light that comes in through the windows gives it a really warm feeling of honey, like a honeycomb. It's very beautiful, very natural, and very quiet. It doesn't echo. It has a very nice feeling inside, and you can see up here, this is where the priest would be, and they have a place where, you know, the bride and groom would get married, or they would have a church service. Many wood carvings. There is a cross up here. It's very peaceful and quiet inside. There still are not very many people out and about because of the COVID-19. Even though we're open here in North Dakota, people are still being careful and they're not going out to do over what's really kind of necessary. They just actually opened up the church a couple of days ago. It was closed as well because of the COVID-19. So I was not able to show you on my last visit. This is the city. It's just me walking to the grocery store because if all of you have been following me for a while, you'll know that I lived in Washington and I made the decision to dump the large house, the car, and the government job and move out here to a simpler life where I could focus on being a natural woman and just do my Quran readings, focus on God, cook, so just be me and just rest. So that's what I'm doing. So I'm grocery shopping here, <laughs> getting food for the next few days. And uh, as you can see, I have healthy whole grains, fruits, cheese, vegetables, lemon juice, apple cider vinegar. Those are actually very good for your body. Lemon juice and apple cider vinegar. You can mix it with water and honey. That's what I've done here. I'm, I make that a lot, actually. I don't like the taste of plain water, so I'll just make tea or I'll add honey, lemon, and 
ginger or honey, lemon, and uh, vinegar. This is me opening packages for Eid. So I got some presents that were sent to me for Eid by one of my viewers. I actually didn't have very good experiences with my Eid in the past and I think they wanted to make it nice for me. So they sent me a couple of things being a revert to help me in my journey as a revert. So I got a prayer mat with a compass. I got um, prayer cards to help me be able to pray for different things like going to sleep, putting on clothes, entering the bathroom and things like that. And this right here, this is a portable um, prayer mat. And it will come in very handy. I'll be able to keep it in my purse. So when I'm out on walks, I will be able to use it easily when it's time for Salah, which is very handy because often I have been out during the time of Salah and I have not had a mat with me because I stayed out too long and so ended up doing Salah just with no mat and so I was happy for that. I got the book of Abraham. I'm very excited. I started reading that last night underneath a tree and I'm going to finish it today, inshallah. Inshallah, very nice, very nice gifts for Eid. I was very happy, pleasantly surprised to find this in the mail. And here I'm opening the last package and it was a beautiful wall hanging made of solid metal. It's black metal and it says Allah up at the top. It's just gorgeous. I ended up hanging it on my wall right across from my bed so that I can see it anytime I'm laying in bed or sitting in bed. Absolutely beautiful. Mashallah to Allah. Beautiful. So on this day, I actually did not cook a larger dinner. I usually do cook dinner, but this day I just felt like having something light. So I just had a couple of slices of toast and some tea, so I didn't, uh, I didn't record that. Here I am praying again, and this was the second prayer that I recorded. I did do five, however, I just found it to be a little bit too tedious uh, and probably redundant to put five prayers within the 30 minute video. So here you can see me doing my prayer again, just a piece of it anyway. It usually takes me about 15 minutes to do a prayer, sometimes a little bit less, but usually at the end, after I'm finished doing my regular Salah, I like to include people in my prayers, be grateful to Allah, and sometimes I will sit there and count on my fingers, and I'll say um, something like either Bismillah or Astaghfirullah or SubhanAllah, something like that. Um, so here I am again after my prayer, I did more study. So I set up my Bible, my Quran, and a couple of other uh, holy scriptures which are on the trunk behind me in case I want to cross-reference them. But here I am about to read more Quran. And I'm also showing you that uh, I like to do some research online and TikTok is included in that research because there's a lot of people on there that like to share what they find is important or interesting ideas or information and documents. And TikTok has become one of the best way to communicate with other people. And they're just very short videos, so they're easy. So I'm showing you here. I'm looking at a couple. This one is another sister, and she was talking about something, I don't know, I can't remember, but <laughs> she has something important to say. Um, and then I was looking at some other things that had to do with government and freedom of speech 
and things like that. Religion, some comedy. I like to look at that. And um, the reason I have my phone usually with me, oh, this one was, I um, can't remember what that was. So I usually have my phone with me with my holy scriptures and with my Quran because I can look things up online that have to do with religion as well and I like to do that. It's interesting and it also confirms so much that is in the Quran. Here I am showing you something else I found. <laughs> okay so I'm gonna put this down in a second and start reading my scriptures. So last night, most of the night, and the night before that, and this day where you see me uh, studying the Quran and cross-referencing it with the Bible, um, I was looking for certain information to verify certain, um, I guess, possibilities in our lifetime right now and in the future. So if you are interested in actually looking to see what it was that I was studying and cross-referencing, I will post it at the end of this video because if I were to tell you all of the verses that I had um, been researching, the list is a little bit too long to go into uh, verbally on the video. I mean, it's not huge but it's big enough that I can't do that so <laughs> if you would like to figure out what it was that I was researching just follow along to the end of the video and I will have it up on the screen in a uh, photo format so that you can just pause the video and you can write those down okay Okay, so I think I'm just going to go ahead and read you one of the verses that I was studying. And please excuse my raspy voice because I am still fasting for one more hour today. And uh, also excuse my gloves because I have to cut the fingers out to be able to turn pages and use my phone. So my four fingers have holes in my gloves. <laughs> okay, so... This is Quran, and I'm going to start with verse 66 in Surah 39. So Surah 39, verse 66. Nay, but worship Allah and be of those who give thanks. No just estimate have they made of Allah, such as due to him. On the day of judgment, the whole of the earth will be but his handful, and the heavens will be rolled up in his right hand. Glory to him, high is he above the partners they attribute to him. The trumpet just be sounded, when all that are in the heavens and the earth will swoon, except such as it will please Allah to exempt. Then will a second one be sounded, when behold, they will be standing and looking on. And the earth will shine with the glory of its Lord. The record of deeds will be placed open. The prophets and the witnesses will be brought forward and a just decision pronounced between them. And they will not be wronged in the least. And in, to every soul will be paid in full the fruit of its deeds. And Allah knoweth best all that they do. The believers will be led to hell in crowd until they arrive there. Its gates will be opened, and its keepers will say, Did not messengers come to you from among yourselves, rehearsing to you the signs of your Lord, and warning you of the meeting of this day of yours? The answer will be true, but the decree of punishment has been proved true against the unbelievers. To them will be said, Enter ye the gates of hell to dwell herein, and evil is this abode of the arrogant. And those who feared their Lord will be led to the garden in crowds, until, behold, they arrive there. Its gates will be opened, and its keepers will say, Peace be upon you, well have ye done, enter ye here to dwell therein. They will say, Praise be to Allah, who has truly fulfilled his promise to us, and has given us this land in heritage. 
We can dwell in the garden as we will. How excellent a reward for those who work righteousness. And thou wilt see the angels surround the throne divine, on all sides singing glory and praise to their Lord. The decision between them at judgment will be in perfect justice, and the cry on all sides will be, Praise to Allah, the Lord of the worlds. And this is just me making a video for you guys on YouTube and for my marriage website. If you have not subscribed, please hit that subscribe button below. Hit the bell icon so you don't miss anything else that I post. And if you like the video, please leave me a comment below so I know what you like and what you don't like and what I should post in the future. And if you liked it, leave me a thumbs up and may Allah make things easy for you. Thank you and have a blessed day. Salam.